So again, so this is rapid applications for transport and it's about agile innovation within our program. The focus is going to be on niche city mobility challenges. Um, and importantly, in the first call for proposals, we did a Raptor pilot project. In other words, we did a test version of this and we had four cities work with us. And um, that was great. We administered it. We broke all the legal rules. We reset structures and found ways to mentor people very targeted to their needs and not in a generic manner. So we learned a lot from the pilot project. Now it's the city's turn to apply to run their own Raptor program, learn from everything we experienced, and it's the opportunity to co-develop and test solutions so the cities feel in charge of their own technological future, that they're not recipients or demonstrators for other people's solutions. Importantly, the budget has been allocated and there is a maximum duration for eight months for agile development. And three city raptors, three projects will provide grants to three different awardees. So we should end up with nine uh, solutions being developed. That's just a quick introduction. I'm gonna hand over to Taylor. Thank you, Gareth. So I will just give um, some of the basic information about the call to set us up. And um, here you see we have a slide about the eligibility and all of this information is of course available in more detail in the call text, which is on our website. So if you want more details, it's there. Here we just have the basics. So to form a consortia for the Raptor call, um, the lead applicant needs to be a core partner of EIT Urban Mobility or an affiliated entity of a core partner. Um, the consortia needs to have a minimum of two partners, a maximum of three. And within that consortia, there should be at least two um, EU member states or associated states represented. So the way to put that consortia together is that there should be at least one city partner. And then the second partner should be a university or an, another type of entity that has experienced running accelerator programs, startup mentoring programs, some kind of agile innovation background. Um, for the KPIs for this project, the two core KPIs that are possible are one, a marketed innovation, or two, an SME or startup um, from innovation. And we also want to note that in this, um, in this call, one of the winners will be reserved for um, a city from a risk country. And we were present in the risk um, monthly meeting to explain that. And if you need more information about that, um, just get in touch with us and we're happy to, to share. Next, I have a couple of key dates here. Um, the most important ones are, of course, the call is now open and the call closing, we have pushed back that deadline to allow for a little bit more time. So um, the deadline will be on the 25th of February. And then by the end of the evaluation, we announce the winners and we're looking at a 1st of May start. Um, Finally, these are the steps we have been through. Some of you may have already seen our first two information sessions that were recorded and are available on YouTube. If you haven't yet seen them, I encourage you to go visit them on our YouTube. Um, and now we are here in this green text with the financial sustainability Q&A. So this is our final information session, um, but there will be of course the possibility to have one-on-ones that you can book with the relevant ILO for your region. So that brings us on to the main topic of today, which is coming back to Gareth to share more about the funding, co-funding, financial sustainability topic. Thanks, Taylor. Okay, so as you can see, um, we have quite a lot of information. Importantly, um, there's the general video, but please make sure that you look at defining the city challenges. That video is key. Um, if you don't adequately define the niche challenges, in time for the application, it would not be deemed eligible, okay? So we want to remind you on the funding and co-funding overview. We have up to 630,000 euro, which would be divided between three city raptors. Each city raptor must award a minimum of 90,000, generally equally to three challenge winners. So you make three definitions of city niche challenges, which is specific to location, topic, ownership, and your ability to demonstrate a minimum viable product. Companies and startups will come forward and bid to win, and you will choose um, the best of those solutions. 
Um, and importantly, this is something we've got to talk about is the financial sustainability can be done on a project level or it can be done on an award level. And we're going to go into a little bit more detail of three possible options there. OK, but that's important to understand. Co-funding. We are seeing a minimum of co-funding of 30 percent overall, the IT mobility project funding and co-funding can be in kind. Anything above 30 percent would be more positively assessed. No one will be penalized if they have 30 percent. But if someone were to come forward and be able to offer additional resources, such as locations and buildings, which could be valorized, access to ICT research infrastructure and development kits, et cetera. Of course, that has a value and you could put that in. Okay, the next slide. Now, this is the beef of the matter. Okay, we have something um, within EIT Urban Mobility, which is called the Financial Sustainability Mechanism, which has caused some challenges to all of us. We are gradually moving to become independent from the EIT funding. Now we have a time span of about 12 years to do that. Um, and we aim to have both earned income, but passive investment income. And as part of that, um, we make financial uh, sustainability agreements and commercial agreements with projects. And those projects will contribute and we will put money into a perpetual innovation fund. That fund will grow. And as soon as our EU funding goes down, we will start to draw on those reserves to fund the day-to-day -day innovation programs of our organization. So it really is the perpetual innovation fund. It just keeps the organization going. Now, what does this mean in relation to Raptor? So in the 2020 pilot, we had a very complex setup, new rules, new partnership models, new cities to work with, and we developed a pilot and FSM, we agreed that that would not be part of the pilot. The complexity of the legal setup, the, the non-partnership relations with our technology enabling partner for the project was very complex. So we didn't, we knew FSM was important, but we agreed that during the pilot, FSM would not be core. Okay. Now from 2021, the EIT feedback has been to us that they, they require all the innovation projects to be funded to provide FSM, all of them. Okay, as such, City Raptor in 2022 must provide an FSM model, and we will not have the right to waiver that. So, the questions that this rose was who owns the FSM in Raptor? So, if a city, so let's say um, Tartu wins a, a project for Raptor. Who owns the FSM? Is it the city of Tartu? Or say Tartu has done a partnership with one of our friends in Helsinki from uh, Helsinki University and that they're going to be doing some commercial work with them. Should they own that responsibility for FSM? Should it be the awardee who gets the prize, gets the mentorship and the opportunity to demonstrate? Or should it be IT or mobility that manages and negotiates? That's, that's a big question. And we can't give you an answer, but we want to look at the options today. Importantly, our cities, they expressed that they do want to have a role in their own innovation. They do want to have that say over what does my city need and how should it be implemented with what data and what way. But they expressly stated they are neither interested in and often not legally capable of commercialising. So this put a big problem between our desired objective and then the EIT rules. So the other complexity we looked at is that there's unknown entities. You know, we're opening a competition and just about anybody could come in with a great niche um, solution to your challenge. And maybe their structure, their legal setup or their organization would not be uh, aligned with our normal FSM capability in working. So there's a bit of an unknown entity of who's going to win and how to be matched. The legal complexity also is got to be considered because we will have multiple actors. There's the lead coordinator of the project. There will be up to three new companies engaged that we didn't know before. And the lack of clarity of how to manage tripartite relationships. 
And this would be multiple tripartite relationships at the same time that have to be executed within basically a month to six weeks from your selection of the project to them starting that work. Okay, so there is complexity there and there's time constraints. So this is a worry, okay? The core KPI that we see is most likely is going to be EH, EIT, HE, Z, and 2 one market innovation, more than the startup, given that we're looking to go to a minimal viable product within four months with the city and to test it. It's really unlikely you'll have a startup with the capability of doing that. So realistically, you're more likely to see market innovation. So this is the feedback we got, and we have to set our mind, how can we fulfill this? Okay, so we're going to show you now what we consider our three potential FSM models. Okay, so if we look here, let's just top line. The rule, each Raptor city will be requested to propose a meaningful MS FSM model to contribute to the Perpetual Innovation Fund. There's no way around that. Um, since we know that this is going to be a marketed innovation, normally a marketed innovation as a KPI would be an existing product, service or solution or new that's created or improved as a result of the program. And normally it should make 10K sales within three years. So that's the criteria, KPI. So the first model, since Raptor is all about the cities owning and, and being in charge of the, the innovation systems, the first model we're looking at, it would be the type of FSM would be a percentage of sales, equity of a startup or tran transaction fees, you know, a taper transaction, every transaction would get a percentage. Normally we're looking at three to five years of a duration. The targeted return from EIT, from the investment is about 20 to 30% of the award of the perpetual innovation fund. And the contract, if the city is to run it, it would be tripartite. You would have the city, EIT, and the awardee, and you'd have that three times. Um, the level can be with the awardee, or the project itself could take an overarching approach and assume FSA. That's model one. Um, model two would be a commercial lead would be identified from those project partners. For example, it might be a university, um, research translation team, it might be an accelerator that you've worked with, it could be someone who's a bit more experienced than the city itself, but the types of FSM would not really change. Duration remains the same, the target is the same, it does become tripartite, but we take the city out and we put in the commercialization. Again, they could choose to do it on a project level or an awardee level. So there's a little bit more experience in, in model two than we would expect for a normal city. Okay, people with a little bit more experience have done this before, accelerated companies and support. Model three is you would choose to delegate responsibility for the FSM to EIT. Um, this model, again, same duration, same type, same return targets, but the contract becomes different. After you jointly select the best niche solution to your problem, you would then transfer that awardee directly to EIT, and EIT would then make that negotiation, come up with the type of agreement that they are willing to work with, and that, that whole discussion would then be informed by the city. So we would tell you within five to six weeks or so, this has now been agreed, the FSM is in place, we can sign the documentation and release the cash. And um, this time, there's not an option on the level. The level of the FSM is on the awardee, so there will be no overriding obligation on the city and no overriding obligation on the other partners within the consortium or commercial. So if anything, it's a bit like delegated responsibility. Okay, so those are the three potential models. You need to decide what you're most comfortable with. Okay. Um, now, the budget options. We need to think about this. The lead applicants decide on financial sustainability. Option one, two, or three, or model one, two, or three. 
but the city has to decide the best way to do it. And the city is supposed to be running this. So let's remember a city rapture. You should be driving it. You might not have the biggest budget, but my God, you should be driving what's being done for you on your behalf. So the overall maximum budget, if the FSM Model 3 is chosen and you delegate your EIT to do the negotiation to maintain the commercial position, then the budget that you submit has to include 90k held for EIT of mobility. You look at the model below, this is how you would put this if you chose to go with FSM Model 3. Importantly, the total budget would be 300k of which 210k is the IT of the mobility funding, and 90k comes from the co-funding at the 30%. And note that 90k of the 210k should be held for the startups, whether it's our model or whether it's model one, two, or three, you're always going to have one for the winners of the awards. Importantly, it's the cash element. And um, when you read through the, the actual Rapture call, each already gets a package of support, of which the 30K is an element, it's not all. So the package of hosting, a package of mentoring, working with the city, um, working as a cohort and coming together and for EIT mobility support and place them, all of this is really quite important. So the cash element, where it's, it's up front, it's actually a package of which this is just one part. So that's the three options that we looked at, and that's what we'd require you to review and decide within your consortium that you're interested in. Now, if we go to the next slide, this is the time where we get to ask lots of questions. <laughs> 